This is a speech about uh, how could be easy to write your our topology provider. Uh, this is the wrong, uh, so this is the proof that uh, we have uh, the, a class named Puppet Provisioning Adapter, as you can see. And you see that uh, we just throw three exceptions. This operation <laughs> is not yet supported. Anyway, uh, but uh, that's not all open and mess do like that. So it's just an exception, <laughs> let me say. Uh, anyway, uh, this is, uh, will be, we'll try to go into the graphical user interface, the new graphical user interface of open and mess. So let me, first of all, start open and mess. I don't remember if it is even started. Okay. Let's stop it so we can start it. It takes a while. So you know that we have this new, very exciting new maps. And of course, uh, when on the last October I come here to visit uh, Marcus, uh, and uh, I got a meeting with David and Matt Brodzowski. And Matthew Brodzowski is, is our uh, uh, CTAO. It's the person that makes the technical decisions about the developing. And they were uh, working uh, and still working on the new maps and the graphical user interface. And they would be, have some testing environment. So the problem is always the same. Well, we are deploying this and we are making tests. We have uh, 20 nodes. <laughs> what about if we have 1,000 nodes? What happened? Is, for example, the performance, the system have performing well and so on. So they ask me, so they, I say, oh, I can write um, an adapter for testing the system. So we are just going uh, to see what can be an adapter, how much code you have to write to create something. OK, just take a look at the maps. Should be something like that. It's very fast. OK. So we have the top the old map are here. I wrote that. Now, I don't know why you, st you still maintain that, just I guess for K. But the new topology map is this one. OK. Uh, I think that I have to fit. OK. Here you have an alarm browser and so on. You don't see nothing, just because it's only one node, OK? And here, you find the node. You see how it's dynamical, pretty, and so on. Uh, and also, oh, I don't, uh, let me move this here. Here you see that there is a menu on the left, on this side, OK? So we can try to understand the power of our OSGI framework and uh, of the API we created, adding. So a new topology provider. Where are the topology provider? By default, we have here two topology providers. You see, one is the link D, and the other is the VMware. I wrote this topology provider. That's not the graphical user interface. So, and uh, uh, Christian wrote the VMware. You can switch between these two topology providers. This can be done because of the SGI nature of our implementation. And we can see how it's possible to add dynamically a new topology provider. Okay. 
So it's easy also to write. I just want to show you because you can see how the menu appears. We are able with a simple operation on the OSGI to import a new service, a new topology drive. What is important in this is that uh, a lot of effort has been uh, done to maintain the level, uh, the different levels, uh, uh, how to, uh, in, uh, the English word is on different levels. The layout, so the rendering from the logic, from the business logic on the, on the, on the system. So we have an abstraction here that we call topology provider in which we, how to say, send to the graphical user interface the topology. And what is the topology? The topology is a, a collection of nodes and links. Okay. Then these objects are mapped into other sets. So go to the code. Let's go to the code. We have here is the code for the scale-free topology provider. So why scale-free? Scale-free means uh, scale-free. It's just uh, a, um, I am, as a background, I'm a, ph I'm, um, a physicist. So uh, I have friends that works on the statistical nature of uh, the network. And you can find that uh, some network has an intrinsic, uh, an intrinsic scale-free nature. It means scale-free means that uh, the number of connection uh, is very high, and I don't want to go into these details. But uh, we go, we when we see, we understand which is the nature of a scale-free network. Okay, and that's all. We have uh, these objects. Okay. This is the scale-free topology provider. Okay, not so much code, and you see that uh, only what you have to do is just we create a class that is an abstract topology provider that has the main method, and you can have uh, an interface that's name is a gra graph provider. You implement this interface, okay? As you see, it's very poor. Save, do nothing. Refresh, do nothing. But I override the method load, okay? And this method has the following other methods. Then it's clear. It's clear vertices and clear edges. So I just clear the map, and then I say if file name equals to Erdos Renis, that's a special scale free network, Skyland Candles. Just I say create random topology. Two hundred and four. That means a, to a topology of two hundred nodes with four uh, medium connection between the nodes. Otherwise create the uh, Barabasi Albert topology uh, with the two hundred nodes and four. That's that's all. That's all the code. So the way in which I create the topology is not really very important. It's just a, a loop using uh, some random function uh, with uh, some rules. OK, that's all. Then I have two operations. Look, the first operation is the Barabasi-Albert operation. OK, and the method is the more or less that because the operation is another interface you can just call. So consider that each of the menu item is an operation. OK. Then we have this operation. So I want to have something to click to generate the topology. OK. Then I have to create the operation. And here the operation is easy because I just do this get the uh, base topology and load. Of course, this is Barabasi Albert, then I load the Barabasi Albert topology. OK, it's easy. And uh, you can imagine that the erdos Rainy operation is more or less the same. OK, 
you just say load. And of course, you have the, that's a way in which in the operation you can control the layout of the, of the graphical user interface. Just to say, oh, get graph container. And who knows Vadin is clearly an operation that you made on the, on, uh, on the container. And you say, read the layout. It's very nice because what it means is that you see that when you call the topology provider, the first thing is that you remove every object from the topology provider. And then you put new objects in the topology provider. OK, but this is just an operation on the topology provider. How to take this operation effect on the system? Using this kind of operation. And you say, oh, just redo the layout of the graphical interface. It's the way in which we can interact from the low level uh, way to the top level to the graphical user interface. OK. This is not all the operation. So let's just take a look at the blueprint. So blueprint is the way in which I instruct the system to do the things. OK? First of all, it's of course, it's we use a spring everywhere. OK? Because we use, it means that uh, we let Spring do the class in its addition. OK, what happens for an OSGI uh, related uh, uh, bundle? I'm just creating a new OSGI DL. I need something that is very similar to Spring to initialize this class and to work on into inside the OSGI. OK. You see a couple of things very important. The first is that you need, so each bundle is a service. The service is very important. So the bin is just the way in which I initialize the class. So I know that I have the S3 topology, the ID is this one, and that I have to call the constructor for the scale-free topology provider class. This gives me an instance of this class, OK? Then I say, well, you have to put on the OSGI bus this class as a service. And this class implements as three services. There are all interface, the vertex provider, an edge provider, and a graph provider. And this class is always ref to this object. OK, so here I implement. And here I'm telling on to OSGI how, who is doing. This is simple because they automatically were registered by who is searching for this. OK, and the app on the other, I don't want to discuss about the app, but the app on the other side is just looking who are the graph provider, who are the edge provider, who are the vertex provider, OK? Uh, finally, you have here the two operation. You see, this is something also that the app is listening as a service, OK? And you see that uh, I created the operation using uh, the class. But a basic Albert operation. When I use bin, I'm instructing the system to initialize the class. So call the constructor. Give me an instance of the objects. OK? And I say, well, if you have an operation uh, that's this kind of operation, just uh, do this. I have two operations, you hear? One is Erdos Reni operation, and the other is Barabasi Albert Dirichlet operation. You are, of course, advised that, that uh, when I wrote the service properties, I have uh, two properties for this operation. The one is the view operation dot menu location just tells you in which menu I want to put this operation, and 
operation.label, what kind of uh, I want to write into the menu. Barabasi, scale free Erdos Renian, and so on. OK, that's all. Now, let's try to add this object. So that's uh, what I have done. That's, you see, I don't know how many lines of a code, 200, not more. OK? Then now, let's try to go to, we use Caraf as a OSGI container. OK? And we are now inside the uh, container of OpenMS. If I do something like this, I get a list of all active bundles inside our Caraf. OK? Then I can also do something like that. I can just, oh my gosh, this is horrible. I can just uh, have a list of features I have. OK? And somewhere I should have also the topology uh, you see here. So I have a list. It's not yet installed. OK? But I have this one. It's listed. It's not really active. I have it's listed. What I do now is easy. I just do something like uh, it's I have here. That's all. OK? I say, oh, install over my topology runtime scale free. Done. When I go here, you see what happened. Magic. You have a scale-free topology provider here among the providers. And you have also the scale-free Barabasi Albert scale-free Erdos Renio operation. So let me select the scale-free topology provider. OK, everything disappears. And let me hit here. Just do ready, heard us ready. Okay, that's okay. I can do this other one. It's nice, you see. So you understand why we want something to test the interface. That's what happened. So now we, everyone, is able to do this. It's not so much complicated. It's just cut and paste, copy, and you uh, just copy the project and write your own topology provider. You also see one thing. There is nothing about network management here. That uh, was one of our uh, main objectives when we designed the, sorry, that's one of the Matt Prozowski ob objective when he designs this because there's that uh, the Rendering layer is completely abstracted from the, how would say, business logic. Okay. In fact, there is nothing of OpenMS here. Nothing. Okay. Uh, there are some nice operations like you can do that, and you can do that. So, it's nice because you see with this number of nodes that the graphical user interface isn't working properly. OK, let, let me, here you see another very important kind of operation. So you see what to do with so many nodes inside the user interface. What do you understand? So the way, it's very important, the way, uh, we, it's a, always a problem. I have a topology, OK? It's nice, it's done, finish. Two minutes. I'm famous for the two minutes. Uh, I do it always. No more than two minutes. Ask David uh, for that. And you see here, you can just change the way in which you represent the systems. We moved from a different way. And I want to ask you, what do you see in this 
picture. Is this picture, does this picture is telling you something or not? What is this picture tells you? This is just the, the circle I had. I put everything, every nodes on the circle. And then, so what do you see? This is a scale-free network, which is the main fact. If you got another uh, uh, network, what you got? It's full of connections. So the way in which you represent your network is very important. That's why we have also this ability in OpenNMS to have different way of, of representation. Of course, so with the same, topo so the same topology, you can have different representation of the, your network. It's strange, but uh, it is. And here, what are these in your mind? They are operations. So you can also write your hour rendering operation that fits your needs. So this can be extended as much as you want. And it's not so much complicated. You see, it's just write the code and install the code and the uh, to care of. Okay? This is a very interesting uh, way because everyone speaks about social network. Yes, this is a good representation of what is a social network. The people are on the circle and the social network is inside. It's dense. Okay. And uh, remember, the medium number of a connection is always four. Okay. So, I'm done. Thank you. And uh, any question? I must. But if Marcus, uh, or because I don't know if. One question. Only one question. No, Marcus has something to tell. Grazie.